Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be painting the final villain from my Warhammer Quest Cursed City set. This is Torgilius. I really like the concept of this character, but I'm not a big fan of the miniature. This is one of those miniatures where I think Games Workshop just went too far with it. The base idea of the old wizened man with his staff is really nice, but then they draped him in candles, they put a bat, a rat, a crow, a little animal beside him. And they even put a notice board on his back with a parchment and a knife through it. And it's all just a bit too busy and a bit too much for me. Also, this miniature is a little bit annoying because Games Workshop, in their infinite wisdom, decided to put an opening at the front of his robes, which means you have to, at the very least, paint the inside of the miniature before you attach it to the base. It just makes painting the miniature just a little bit more annoying. But that's what I've done anyway. I spray painted the miniature with Army Painter Matte White and then I just painted the inside black before attaching it to the base. Once the base coat is completely dry, I'm going to use Lead Belcher to paint all of the metallic areas. We have a small set of keys. There are some details on a knife. There is the top of his wolf head cane. And he also has a candle holder in his left hand, which I forget to paint at the moment, but I do go back and do it later on. Next, I'm going to paint the skin areas using Crusader skin. So this goes on the face. It will also go on the hands. He has a rat on his back, so I'm going to put some Crusader skin on the rat's tail. I also put it on the raven's beak, and then later on, I will apply some pallid bone over that beak as well. And I'm applying that quite thin. Next, I'm switching to hardened leather, and I'm going to paint the stock on his back. Hardened leather always works really, really nicely. It brings out the details so well, and it's a really nice, rich brown color. I like it a lot. And I'm also going to paint it over most of the metallic areas. I'm going to paint it on his knife, on the handle of the knife, and also on the sheath. I'm going to paint it over those keys on his belt. I will also paint his staff, including the wolf's head topper, which is something I do regret doing later on. I think I should have gone with a silver top for that cane, just so there wasn't quite so much brown on this miniature. He also has some leather wrist straps, so I'm going to paint those with hardened leather too. Next, I'm switching to pallid bone, and I'm going to apply this on the front of his headdress, his hat, I don't know what you want to call it, and it will also go on the parchment that is on his back. This parchment, by the way, is a perfect opportunity to do some freehand lettering. I'm not going to bother at the moment. Maybe later on I will go back and do something, but not in this video. Next, I'm switching to Grim Black, and of course I'm going to paint the Raven with this. I think the Grim Black is one of the speed paints that always goes on really nicely and gets good results. Of course, I'm also going to paint that bat that is hanging upside down on the stock. Well, I'm calling it a stock, but it actually looks more like the top part of the plough that would go over an ox's shoulders. But anyway, Grim Black also going onto the boots, of course, or the one boot you can see. And I will also use it on his headgear. And as always with speed paints, trying to be as careful as possible not to get any overpainting, just because it's a pain to have to clean it up with Army Painter Matte White before applying the next colour. And our next colour is Hive Dweller Purple, and I'm going to paint all of his robes in this colour. And I definitely regret doing this. The Hive Dweller Purple doesn't go on very well, it doesn't look very nice, and I'm not happy with the finish. And at the end of this video, I will go back to the robes and I will use some Army Painter paints just to apply some washes and to layer up some extra colours, just to smooth out the finish because I'm just not happy with it. Next is Gravelord Grey, and this is going to go on his leg. And I'm also going to use it on the details of the face of the little fox wolf thing that's beside him because I've decided I want to paint this creature white. So I'm just going to use the grey as a shading. I'm going to put it in the eyes, inside the mouth and inside the ears. And then I'm going to brush it outwards from the eyes just to pull it back across the fur, across the face area. The idea here is just to pull focus a little bit to the face of the creature and to help the details pop just a little bit more and to put some extra variation in the fur tones so it isn't just wholly white. And speaking of holy white, that is our next colour. I'm of course going to put it on the beard, and as I apply it to the beard, I'm going to start at the top and work down, and I'm going to make sure that the paint thins out as it moves towards the end of the beard, so it's whiter at the tips. I'm also going to apply it to those candles, and as I mentioned before, it's also going to go all over this little beastie here. 
The official paint scheme for this creature is brown, but I really wanted to have it in white so it's a little bit brighter, something to stand out from an otherwise rather dark miniature. Next up is dark wood. This is just for the body of the rat that is sitting on his shoulders. Obviously, we've already done the rat's tail. And then we're going to use Zelot Yellow on the tips of the candle flames. You just put a tiny drop on the top of the flame and let it run down a little bit. And what should happen is you should transition to a white from the army painter white that is already on there. And you will get that sense of a flickering flame that is white hot at the center, moving outwards to the yellow. And the candles actually ended up being one of my favorite parts of this miniature. And at this point, we are finished with the speed paint, but as I have already said in this video, I was not happy with how the cloak looked, so I did a few extra things. First of all, I applied a coat of Army Painter Purple Tone. I was hoping that that alone would pull together the blotchy streakiness of the finish. It didn't, so I then got some Army Painter Alien Purple, thinned it down with some Lamian Medium, and I worked up some layers of that on the raised parts of the cloak. It brightened up the cloak a bit, and it also smoothed out the finish, and I was much happier with that as a result. After doing that, I of course applied some sterling mud to the base, and I also put some lead belcher on the rim of the base, as this is a named villain, and all my named villains have silver bases. I do still have a bit to do on this miniature. I have to dry brush the base. I will have to varnish the miniature. I am going to put some flock on the base, maybe a little bit of rubble, things like that. And if I really feel the urge, I may put some freehand text on that parchment on his back. But for now, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.